In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix up contour lines and their labels in Illustrator once you've exported both from ArcMap. This is a raw export from ArcMap, and to keep things simple, I've included only 20-foot contour lines, 100-foot index lines, and labels for the index lines. So the first thing I'm going to do is simplify all the contour lines so they don't have such jagged edges. If we zoom in here, you can see that these contour lines were clearly made from a DEM because they have such sort of jagged edges that follow the boundaries of the pixels in the DEM. And more realistic contour lines are going to be smoother so they better mimic the terrain. So we're just going to come in here and first I'm going to ungroup all the contour lines, get rid of the clipping masks like I always do ungroup there and do that with the 20 foot ones too. I'm just doing control shift G to ungroup once I have the group selected. And then if I have both of those types of contour lines selected I can come up to the object menu and path and simplify and I'll turn on my preview and I'll simplify with a curve precision of somewhere up near 98 or 99 Let's see, just enough to get sort of the jaggedness out of most of those contour lines. You want to make sure that you're preserving the topological relationship um, of these contour lines so that you don't have these lines crossing when you simplify them. But um, we also want to make them a little bit more curvy. So about 91% looks good. You'll see that there are places where you might need to go back and do some touch-ups by hand. For instance, the topology here is a little bit too close um, and we could come over and get our smooth tool and use that to help us smooth out some of these really tight corners. Um, working with contour lines uh, can be a pretty labor intensive process if you go through and make sure that uh, first of all that they represent the actual landscape features as best as they can and also uh, just to remove a lot of the artifacts of producing contour lines from a DEM that pr makes these very jagged so you could certainly spend a lot of time with the smooth tool. So our next step is going to be to position these labels so that they're a little bit more readable. In general, contour line labels should, should be positioned so that you can read them all sort of in the same orientation. So um, let's try to move all of these labels up so that they're in this area and they're all either roughly horizontal or at least sort of fanning out in the same direction. So I'm going to go and ungroup my labels, remove the clipping mask, select that and ungroup and then I can move these labels individually so maybe I'll put my 400 up there put my 500 whoops put my 500 up on this line and I'm just rotating them using the rotate tool uh, that's R on your keyboard to access it quickly And with this, I'm going to rotate it so that it's in the same orientation as all the other ones. Basically, this is just so that you can read them all sort of with one eye movement uh, or by looking at one point on the page and really get a sense for how the elevation changes dramatically in that area. If I was going through uh, and doing this comprehensively, I would move a bunch of the other labels on the map. But for the time being, I'm just going to work with this cluster of labels right here. So our next step is, of course, going to be to grab all of our labels and open our type character palette. And you'll see that these don't all have the same font size. And that's probably because of the export legacy from ARC. If we nudge them up and down just with our keyboard up and down arrows, they fall into their actual type size, which is about 11 points. Let's just make that exactly 11 points. And... We might also want to make these labels the same color as these index contours. Not that we'll necessarily leave all these contours the same color as they are, but it's just good practice for contour labels to be the same color as the, the contours that they're labeling. So I'm just going to select with the eyedropper tool the color of those index contours and then flip that over so rather than being a stroke on those labels, it's going to be the fill. So there I am. And then our next step is going to be to actually cut these index contours so that you don't see the, the contour running straight through the label but it sort of ends at either side of the label. And there are two options that we can use for that. Either we can actually take the scissors tool and cut the contour uh, in two places 
or we can use clipping masks in order to create a halo around these labels uh, and then the clipping mask will define where you do and do not see these index contours and I think that's a better option because it gives us more flexibility in the end and on top of that if we were to be using a lot more contour labels than we are here it'd be much simpler to create these clipping masks for all of the labels sort of automatically in your document rather than going through and having to cut your contours for each individual label by hand. So let's grab all of our labels. And the first thing we need to do is make a copy of this layer that includes all these labels. So I'm just going to reduce that, drag that sublayer down to the new layer button down here, and drop it. So now we have two identical copies of these labels. And I'm just going to lock the lower one. Those are going to be the, the text labels that will remain the text labels in our final draft. And I don't want to change them by accident right now. So I've got this copy selected, and in order to create the halos, the first thing I need to do is create outlines for all these text pieces. So I'm going to come up to Object and hit Expand, and I'm going to ask it to expand both Stroke and Fill. All these text pieces only have Fill right now, so that's all that will be expanded. And if we zoom in on them, you can see that it's drawn outlines around all the text. This is no longer typeset text. It's, uh, it's now been turned into shapes that have Fill. And now, once these are uh, once these are turned into shapes, I can go up to Object and Path and offset that path to create the halo. So let's offset not by 10 points. That's a bit dramatic. Let's offset it by two points, and it's going to create this uh, this area around all of the text that is going to define where we want to cut our index contours in order to allow the text to sit within that line. It's important to make sure that your halo overlaps between the letters because you don't want chunks of that contour line to appear between your letters or within sort of the middle of, of letters if you have letters that have these interior shapes. So a two-point offset looks pretty good. It's overlapping between all the letters. I'll hit OK. So through expanding the letters and then creating the offsets, it's put each one of these labels into a unique group. And for our next steps, I would really rather that these not all be in separate groups. So I'm going to select that entire sublayer and then do Control shift g in order to remove all of those shapes from the groups. And so now we have just a layer that's full of paths and compound paths that represent each of the parts of those labels. I'm now going to come up to Window and get my Pathfinder panel and then use the Unite tool. If I click on that, you can see that it's united all of the overlapping parts of those shapes. Again, it's put it into a group, but now we just have single paths that are defining each one of those halo areas. Again, I'm going to ungroup just so that I don't have to deal with that group being there. And now we want to, with all of these paths selected that represent the halos, come up to Object and say Compound Path and Make. And this will create a single compound path that contains all of these worm shapes all of the halos for all of the labels within our map. So we just have one object representing all of those halo areas. The next step is to create a rectangle that contains the entire area of your map. And the reason for this is that this rectangular area is going to act as a clipping mask, and any of the contour lines within this rectangular area will be visible when we get done with this process. We want to take that compound path that includes all of the halos, all of the little worm shapes, put that on top of the rectangle that we just drew and then in this next step we're gonna knock out or subtract those halo shapes from this rectangle we just made so the contour lines will be visible in all of the parts of this rectangle except for where these little halo shapes are so if we select the compound path and this rectangle path we just made and then use this minus front tool in the pathfinder panel we'll click that and then deselect by clicking out in this white space. You'll see that now we have this compound path represents all of the areas where we want to see our contour lines and you can see the places that we don't want to see our contour lines are the halos that are right around our labels. So now that we have this compound path that describes the areas where we want to see our contours, we've got to move that into our contour layers and use it as a clipping mask for our contours. So let's open up intervals 100 here, and I'm just going to drag that compound path down into that layer, intervals 100. And then to make a clipping mask, all I need to do is select the entire layer. I've got both the contours and that compound path selected, and the compound path is the top object in that selection. And I just need to come up to Object and Clipping Mask and Make. 
and there you go. If I deselect by clicking out in white space, you can see that it's knocked out the areas of those index lines where those labels are.